My name is Mike Sullivan. I'm a former IRS agent and teaching instructor with Internal Revenue Service. Welcome to my YouTube station. Um, this is the home of the five minute or less video. I don't really like to talk longer than that because you're not going to listen. So I get to the point. If anyone's telling you anything different than I am, they're lying to you or don't know what they're talking about. There's a lot of people on YouTube who don't know what they're talking about. So just be careful, especially in this space. So anyway, I, I worked at IRS for a decade. Uh, I've been in private practice for four decades. That means I've been doing this for 50 years. And yes, I'm a national expert. I've been on, uh, God, I've been on seven or eight major news stations. Uh, just on a, did an interview today about IRS for Epic Times, their satellite TV station or, or network station. Today, I want to talk to you about writing a protest letter. Lord knows how many I got at IRS protesting this, penalty abatements, trust fund cases, audit cases, going here, going there. Everyone can write a protest letter. When you've been rejected by Internal Revenue Service and you want to go to the next level, okay, you got to write a protest letter. But the letter will say what the protest letter should contain. Usually there's five, six, or seven elements that IRS wants in writing the protest letter. The protest letter can be very general and very basic. IRS is not going to go ahead and deny it as long as you have it in timely, but you want to have substantive information on the protest. They're going to want your name, your address, uh, the type of tax, the reason for it, what statement, what, what's your facts basis, why do you disagree. That's basically what they want in a protest letter. So the question is how much detail you have to go in for a protest letter. And you can do two different things. You can just send in the protest letter and give them basic information. I disagree with the findings because this, they didn't evaluate this, they evaluated that wrong, and just state four or five reasons. Or if you want to really blow up the uh, protest letter, what you do is you put exhibits, testimonies, and documentations. That's what win cases, self-serving letters to Internal Revenue Service on protest letters. At the end of the day, when you get before the appeals division or whoever you're going to, you're not going to go ahead and get anywhere. So once you write the protest letter and the next step is going in and contesting it, you better have a nice long letter based on facts, based on documentations, based on exhibits, based on letters signed under perjury, and all the affidavits you get going ahead and putting forth. So once again, if you're writing a protest letter, you can answer the basic questions. If you want to go ahead, add all that information that I talked about. It's going to be very helpful to the agent. But know this, self-serving letters will not get you anywhere. You must have documentation. You must have exhibits. You must be able to show what you're saying is true. If this information was helpful, please give me a subscription. YouTube loves subscriptions. It just helps me move up the thing. And if you want me to do a YouTube, leave a comment. Say, Michael, do a YouTube on this. If it's a damn good idea, I'll do a damn good idea. I'll do a damn good YouTube for you, too. Anyway, thank you much. Leave me a comment. Give me a subscription. Give me a like. I'm always interested in your thoughts. You're always welcome to comment. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I'm always available for representation and consultation. Thank you.